We've all been there. You just want to craft yourself an ender chest or maybe build a wacky stegosaurus, but you've just realized that you don't have enough obsidian. Now you could always go to the end pillars to dig it out, but digging obsidian just takes so long. Now the good news is that in 1.16, we finally have reliable obsidian farms. And no, I'm not talking about piglins. Those guys will steal 12 of your gold for every one obsidian that they give you. And then they'll murder you to take it back. No, I'm talking about this. Another portal-based obsidian farm which will take your two flints and turn them into 12 stacks of obsidian. And it'll do it in under half an hour. Okay, sorry for the cheesy intro. So now I'm just going to go over all the concepts that this farm uses and basically what's making it run. Uh, this video will give you all the concepts that you need and then uh, I will make another video which would be a block by block tutorial. So all obsidian farms need the wither because he's the only way to actually break obsidian automatically besides mining it. However, most obsidian farms use the end platform because it allows you to generate obsidian the fastest. The reason I'm not using the end platform is because you only have one of them in your world. So if your friends want to fight the ender dragon, if you want a gravity block duper, or if you play on an anarchy server, you can't use it. And then the other option then would be to use nether portals. And also this farm is the safest obsidian farm out there, maybe excluding immortal end crystal setups, but those aren't trivial to obtain. If you have an end platform obsidian farm, then you can generate the platform, but without a player, but you can't leave the end and then come back without the wither seeing you and blowing everything up. Uh, in contrast, this farm will, uh, you can load it and unload it as many times as you want. Uh, as long as you have an alt account loading it while it's running or it's built in the spawn chunks, either one will make it uh, perfectly safe. And finally, if you do decide that you want the fastest rates, I would recommend you still stick around to see how the wither cage is set up because this is a new design for 1.16.2 which not a lot of people know about and uh, is a lot safer than even other designs like my 1.15 one. Okay, let's show how the farm works in first person. Basically you need to come into this water stream and let it carry you. Once you're in the water stream, as long as you don't have depth strider, you don't need to do anything. You'll get pushed into the portal and the reactor will start running. We get sent to the nether side and here we break the portal for a split second which lets us go through again back to the overworld. And this nether portal is actually all we have on the, on the nether side. And now back in the overworld, uh, we just force the portal to generate there in the middle. The glass ring is the area that we have restricted spawns. Uh, we damage the wither, which breaks all the blocks, and then we fall down again to start the cycle anew. So that's the quick rundown of how the farm works. I'm not going to go in too much depth because El Mango's video, which is the only other video about nether portal obsidian farms, also talks about this stuff. Instead, I want to focus on how my farm is different, and the principal way is the wither cage. I learned that water moves wither skulls, which led me to create this wither cage, and this one is actually so useful that I think I'm going to create a tutorial on it as well later on. Uh, the general concept is that the skulls follow basically a straight line to their target mob, but then we push them with the water stream and they veer up and of course, which lets us make them hit some area that's not the target mob, and because if we shoot a blue skull, it's just going to fall along the water and hit the wall just as the same as the black skulls. We don't actually need to worry about blue skulls, and so we can just let them shoot them, which means we only need this one target mob here who's looking at the withers. Uh, and yeah, both withers can track the same mob even, which is pretty awesome. Now another YouTuber created a video showing the same thing but his video only has a couple views. We have perfect wither cages in the game now and no one noticed, which I think is kind of weird and also a shame. But since I was able to make this farm, hopefully you'll share this video with other people so we can get more people to realize that wither cages like this are now uh, available and withers are a better strategy for block breaking than they ever have been before. Then we have up here a cobblestone generator, which is basically just constantly trying to generate cobblestone uh it's so if we just break random things it's gonna push in cobblestone and sometimes like if you break these the black skulls will break them but eventually it'll fix itself so it's not an issue if you're wondering why this guy's damaged i actually used a command to set him to one hp 
and I did that a couple days ago, uh, and I've been testing in here, doing tick warps and stuff. He's never taken any more damage, so this thing is incredibly safe. And even if you're worried about like one, that one stray freakish skull that is going to hit him eventually, uh, remember he's an iron golem, he's got 50 hearts and you can heal him with just an iron ingot, super easy. Uh, the thing you should actually be worried about is the withers seeing a different target. So um, in the spawn chunks, this only happens on a server restart, I believe. Uh, definitely for the main heads, and I think for the side heads as well, because you can operate the farm in single player, and the side heads should be able to see you then. So I think that they're still going to track him. But even then on a the server restart, you just want to make sure that there's no other mobs in the area that can spawn. These end rods should provide lighting, uh, make sure everything else is lit up or spawn proof. And let's see what else. Uh, like this doesn't need to be glowstone, but I used it because it light, lights it up. And then you also want to make sure that other mobs don't spawn in it in more rare conditions. So if you have like a village nearby, it'll spawn cats in here and then the wither will attack the cat so don't have a village don't put this really near any of your other stuff in your base probably because even if you mess up then or if i lied to you and it actually isn't safe then at least only some random part of your world that you don't care about will be destroyed instead of the middle of your base um other mobs let's see i talked about cats uh bats um y36 and below you gotta light everything up to light level four or above I think uh, you don't want a bat getting in here and messing up your day. You don't want, uh, if it's in an ocean biome, which is the easiest biome to build this in, you don't want um, mobs spawning in the water, so just put slabs or bubble streams in your, that's the only water source block you really need. Uh, and these are all bubble streams, so it's fine. Uh, don't bring your pet parrots here. Uh, just be careful while I, when you come here because all it takes is one stray skull hitting that fence, that fence, or that boat, and the wither escapes. One thing you might be curious about is if we need to keep this loaded all the time so that the withers don't lose their tart uh, side of that guy, why don't we just build a chunk loader into it? Uh, and that would be especially useful because then you could operate it solo anywhere, not just in the spawn chunks. But that won't that won't work because there can't be any nether portals uh, here. So um, if there was another portal lit here, or even much further than that, instead of the nether sending you to a new portal that's generated here, it would just send you to the other portal that it found. So that's why uh, another portal, or chunk loaders need nether portals. So I don't think it's possible to build a chunk loader. You might be able to add uh, like a dispenser in the nether side, not the overworld, but in the nether add a dispenser that dispenses an item through the portal each time. But the problem with that is that, well, first of all, you got to supply it with items. So this thing consumes only flint and steel, which is pretty awesome. But second of all, you have to get the timings right. And I don't know how to do that. If you can figure out how to load it uh, using droppers like that or something, then please let me know somehow because I would be super interested in how you actually managed to do that. Another thing you'll notice is that we have these snow golems here. Uh, so what these guys are doing is that you need the snowballs to be dispensed into the withers to damage them. Where Here it is. Uh, so there, that'll dispense into the wither and damage them, which breaks the portal. Uh, and you need snowballs to do that, obviously. And basically this guy will generate a snow layer each time that the wither will break and actually drop the snowball. And then what you can do is collect the snowball and I filter it out here, I believe. Yeah, filter the snowballs and send them back up into this, which, uh, yeah, it seems like this is somehow running a profit of snowballs. I suspect it might just be snowballs getting stuck somewhere. I'm not sure but it produces two snowballs for each cycle, which is what it consumes. So it should be self-sufficient, or if there's any loss, it's very minor and you can run this without really ever worrying about the snowballs. And uh, just to give credit where credit is due, uh, this is 
the snowball idea was Captain Oblivious, uh, another YouTuber's. Uh, he showed that off in his Wither Cage, which was the other video discussing the bubble stream mechanics for Wither Cages. And to show how to get the the snow golems in there, uh, you can do it before or after the withers are summoned. Let me just kill this guy quick. You just need these things. Um, we're going to summon him here. Push him. Hopefully not into the void. Push him the other way. <clears throat> He'll side up against the wall. We can break this. Break the minecart, break the wall, put a glass there, and push it in with a piston. And now he's stuck there, and there's glass in his head so he can't see the wither, and there's glass in his body so he won't be pushed by anything else. And this is why you should actually definitely be more careful when you put the snow gloms in. Uh, while I was putting this guy in. You could actually see it in the last clip for a split second. Uh, he was able to see this wither and he attacked him. And then that was enough to make this wither attack this. And it certainly could have been worse. He could have even hit the boat or the fence gate and let himself out. So yeah, um, you need to be very careful working with these guys. Now we're on to the last parts of the farm so let's see how we get the player to the nether we have a water stream which is just long enough to push the player into the nether but doesn't flow into the portal space which is good for two reasons uh, first of all it's slow and it blocks the fall damage you would take when falling down from the top you press the tripwire hook which instantly lights the portal and when you leave the tripwire you will pulse the other dispenser twice to break the portal uh, which is why we want to go slow so that way we have enough time to actually reach the nether and yeah, we don't need any timers or anything because the pr the tripwire is just long enough or we're in the string for long enough. Then in the nether side, we have a, an analogous circuit. So the boat pushes us onto the pressure plate and then we pulse the dispenser first and then do the flint and steel. And you should note that uh, in survival, you have to set up hoppers to feed more flint and steels into the dispenser. I'm just using unbreakable ones because I'm in creative. And these blocks are actually optional. They're just to stop things from seeing in there, as well as these. And this one's the flint and steel one. This one's the lava one. Now the reason that this boat has chickens in it is because um, if you have a mob riding another mob, then neither one will be sent through another portal. Uh, and the reason we have turtle eggs here is because just in case a zombie pigman spawns in here or something, uh, he'll hopefully pathfind to the turtle egg and not nudge you around into places you shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. It's not 100% safe, I think. I haven't actually ever seen a zombie pigman spawn here. Uh, there's none down here. So, yeah. But just in case, I think it would be smart to add it. It also adds a, a convenient way to get up and down without letting guests see in anywhere. Finally, one nice thing that you can get with this nether portal is that if you enter in the wrong spot, like let's say I go in here somehow, uh, it won't generate the portal in the farm. Uh, even there, I guess, with the glass ring, it'll generate out here, but otherwise it would have generated it like here, 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 I think. So, yeah, uh, it's nice being able to kind of protect where, make it less dangerous if the player does somehow move in the nether, because what you definitely don't want to have happen is for the portal to spawn just a couple blocks off like inside one of the withers because then you'll definitely die and then the wither will definitely escape and your location also is important uh, if you look at the chunks this both withers and the iron golem are all in the same chunk which is very important uh anything more than that is not really needed but uh, i would recommend trying to find a spot where you have it right on the chunk border like this and in the middle of the chunk for that. And this is where the portal is in the nether, which is the southwestern corner of a chunk. Is kind of where the nether portal is, I guess. Yeah, you, you, you can see the video. Um, but there are definitely other spots where it would work. I 
suspect that any even multiple, like if I built this two farms this way, it would or two blocks this way, it would be exactly the same because uh, two blocks in the nether is 16 in the overworld, which is at one chunk. And I will be doing a block by block tutorial later if you prefer that, but hopefully this tells you enough to build your own obsidian reactor, uh, which will let you get tons and tons of obsidian to use in builds or whatever you need obsidian for. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you find any problems with the farm, let me know in the comments. If you are going to build the farm, that's awesome. Let me know in the comments. And if you hated the video, remember to always leave a dislike. Alright, I have been Eldritch Art, and thank you for watching.